Okay. Okay, so tonight for our demo, the Rick Tucker is going to be doing some aluminum spinning, I believe. Okay, so this is something new and different. And uh, so it should be very interesting. So let's welcome Rick. Well, good evening. Um, tonight we're going to do like Ron said, we're going to do something a little different. Um, I saw on video, on my YouTube videos, um, last year or the year before, some spinning uh, aluminum on a wood lathe. So I thought, well, that's pretty cool. I could try that. So I spent uh, spend a couple of bowls. And these were the first two bowls that uh, that I spun. This was the first one. And then this was the second one. As you can see, uh, the finish on the inside is a lot different. I am, don't know why, but uh, I'm not a metallurgist. So tonight's demo, we're going to turn bowls similar to this. And uh, so we're going to have some fun doing it. Uh, if you'd like to uh, pass these around. So I've been turning, um, uh, I started turning in about uh, 2016 after I retired. And um, so I started out on a shopsmith and soon found out that a shopsmith is not very conducive to uh, wood turning and uh, moved into a, a real lathe, which I've enjoyed ever since. Um, metal spinning is uh, what I understand is a very ancient, uh, the Egyptians were spinning metal. So it's been around a long time. Uh, metal spinning is uh, uh, like these uh, reflectors on these clamp lights, those are spun. Uh, and so a lot of times spinning uh, a, a part is a lot cheaper if you have a limited run of production instead of making uh, uh, dies to use a uh, press to press them out you can spin them uh, some professionals can hold the uh, really tight tolerances the production spinning they usually use the forms uh, are metal and I've even seen YouTube videos where they use CNC spinning machines which was I thought was really neat so they, they can hold the close tolerances this one company was a company in Mexico that does this CNC uh, metal spinning. Um, so, the, the, the different things that you need to spin uh, on a wood lathe is, first of all, is a, uh, a face plate, uh, in addition to the lathe, the face plate. You'll need a chuck. which is, can be metal or we're going to use wood. And then you need uh, sheet metal or you can buy pre-cut discs, a uh, special tool post, uh, some forming tools, some lubricant, and some metal polish. We're going to cover each one of these as we go on. What I wanted to touch on a little bit was safety. We're going to be working with a sharp piece of aluminum spinning, so you want to be very careful. Stay away. There's going to be a lot of burrs when you cut the cut the aluminum. Uh, if you cut it out of a sheet, you'll you'll have burrs. Uh, the metal could come out of the lathe. It's not. It doesn't come flying out like a bowl when you break a tenon off or something like that, but. Uh, it could come out, so safety is in order. 
always be aware of, uh, of uh, sharp edges and, and the spinning metal. It'd be like a saw, so you, you know, keep your fingers and uh, appendages out of the way of harm. And normally when turning on a lathe, uh, it's not recommended to wear gloves, but in this case, I'm going to wear gloves and I'm going to be very careful to keep them away from any spinning uh, uh, pieces of equipment. Also, when you, uh, when you have the, you're using metal, you need to soften it. So it's softened with a torch. So if you're using a propane torch or a map gas torch around wood or sawdust, you need to be very aware that, uh, you know, they're combustible materials and uh, take the right precautions to uh, not burn everything down. And I wasn't going to bring a torch into uh, the wood shop here, so we'll have some pictures later. <coughs> And if any time during this uh, demo you have a question, by all means, just uh, let me know and I'll try and answer it the best I can. So the first thing is you need some metal. And you can spin uh, different kinds of metal. You can spin pewter, which is really soft. You can spin aluminum as long as you anneal it. You can spin brass, copper, silver, uh, sheet metal. You can, if you have the horsepower, and you can spin the steel sheet if, you, if you're so inclined. And that would be on a professional lathe and not a wood lathe, because that's pretty tough. If you anneal the, the metal, do you have to temper it afterwards? <clears throat> It'll work harden. Okay. Uh, so like uh, if you were turning something like a bell, you would soften it and then you would form it. And as you form it, it, it will work harden. And so you'll get the the, uh, the ring once you, you get it formed. Okay. Is, uh, do you need the aluminum with the torch also? Yes. Okay. And we'll touch on that. Uh, I have some samples of aluminum here. The uh, typical uh, thickness is 32 thousandths, 40 thousandths, and 50 thousandths. Here are examples of the sheet in case anybody is not familiar with the, the sheet metal as it comes. I do not know the, uh, the alloy of the, of the aluminum there. I do know that it's very gummy to cut. You can buy pre-cut discs. I searched a little bit on the internet and I found some 62,000 pre-cut discs, seven inches for seven dollars. <coughs> it's a lot cheaper to buy it by the sheet and cut it out yourself. And uh, I found uh, a good place to buy uh, your sheet metal is uh, Metal by the Foot in downtown. You just tell them what size you want, how th what thickness you want, and they'll cut it for you, and it's fairly reasonable. Uh, I got a sheet of uh, 32 thousandths that was, the sheets are 48 inches wide, so I got 48 inches by uh, 15 inches for $17. So that, that wasn't uh, too bad. So, if you can show photo number one. Okay. Bear with me a little bit. No problem. Uh, the first thing I do with the, uh, when I have, like uh, the, the samples being passed around, they have a protective uh, coating on the decorative face. And so, on the opposite side, that's going to be the outside of the uh, bowl 
the decorative side will go to the inside. So if you have any deep scratches or any mars on it, now would be the time to go ahead and clean those up with, you can use light sandpaper or steel wool or, you know, polish, whatever you need to, to get those out of. I'm not going to cover that, but, uh, so the next one. So here I just use a scribe and I scribe a circle on the sheet of aluminum. The uh, tape, I take a number of uh, layers of blue tape and put them in the center. That's so that the point of the scribe doesn't uh, create a dimple on the inside of the bottom of the, of the Okay. Um, so when you cut these out, I've heard one little trick is to uh, leave a little tab on one place of the disc and drill a hole in it. That way you can hang the disc when you torch it. And so then you can remove the tab later. I tried it. I really don't like it. I'd like to go ahead and cut the circle. And what I do is I take a uh, one by, uh, make it vertical, drive two headed nails into the bottom part and one up the top. So the disc sets on the two bottom nails and leans against the top one to keep it away from the wood and it's in a vertical position and that way I can torch the uh, disc without uh, burning the wood. And I don't have to remove the tab later. Okay, Mel, the second one. This is the protective coating. Uh, what I do after I cut it out is remove the burrs because I don't like burrs, but uh, it helps to get the protective coating off. If you have burrs on, on the side, some of the plastic will hang up in there and as you torch it, it will burn. So I uh, just go ahead and deburr it, take it, take off the uh, protective coating. Okay, the next one. You use a deburring tool to Take that burr off. And I use it. You can use a deburring tool. They make the little ones, or I just use a file. And that works great for me. So, uh, and I wear my gloves when I when I take the burrs off. So, okay, we've got uh, we've got the plastic uh, taken off, and aluminum is not like some of your other metals, steel. To a needle steel, you heat it up until it glows cherry red and then let it cool. Aluminum doesn't change colors. So a little trick that I learned from the videos is to use a just a regular Sharpie. Take the Sharpie and mark up the, the disc. What happens here is that the Sharpie will burn off of the aluminum at the right temperature that the aluminum needs to be annealed. And word of caution is don't use the industrial Sharpie because it has a higher temperature you know, to burn off. Um, if you heat the aluminum higher, I'm not sure what would happen metallurgically. Other than if you heat it too much, you'll get a puddle of aluminum. So when it burns off, stop, let it air cool slowly. Don't put it in water or anything. Just let it cool down, air cool slow. And um, I've heard that if you don't take the plastic coating off when you use a torch that it could cause a lot of smoke, but I, I just heard that. <laughs> and it's very hard to get off once it... So, and the next photo please. Uh, this is a video, can you play it? This is actual torching the aluminum disc to take the, the uh, Sharpie marks off. Do you use propane or do you use a mat? This is propane. How do you 
With a jigsaw. If you were to use tin snips or something like that, it would be very uneven, but I found a jigsaw works best. I have two different ways. I tried the end of the edge of the workbench, make some notches in your workbench, or you can take and cut a piece of uh, uh, two by eight or two by ten and make it round and set it on there and cut around. But that's the best way that I found. Okay, the next one. And as you heat it, your disc will warp. That's okay. They will warp and they will be a little bit out of, you know, have rough edges after being jigsawed, but we're going to true them up. So uh, that, that's okay too. So now would be the time to remove your tab if you have one and uh, go ahead and use your your uh, steel wool or whatever to take any blemishes out of your of your uh, wood. So what we're going to do now is uh, talk about the chuck. This form, they call it a chuck. And I think they call it a chuck because that's what's going to drive the aluminum. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the chuck mounted on the face plate and then the follower disc, which is going to be mounted in the tail stock, and they will come together to clamp that piece of aluminum in uh, place. Another show and tell. This is a chuck that uh, I use to turn this bolt. Like I said, some of these chucks for professionals, they're, they're metal. This is a simple one. It has a uh, all the chucks they need a, a draft on the sides. So I was going to turn one of these, but I thought everybody here knows how to take, turn a piece of 2 by 10 glue on a 2 by 6 and cut it round. So this is what I use, it's just construction lumber and which anybody's seen the, the lumber that they've got now is pretty bad. This has even got a big wormhole right through the middle of it. But uh, you go ahead and turn it. The considerations are you want to know you need to set your uh, diameter of your the bottom of your bowl. You need to make a, a draft and establish the height or the depth of the bowl, height of the chuck. Make all your transitions smooth as you go around from the from the base to the sides and then smooth at the bottom. And so that's pretty simple, mounted on a, on a chuck. Here's a chuck that uh, I made for a bell, which, by the way, I have not been able to make a bell with it, but... <laughs> Is it because it's so deep and, and straight down, or you have to try to mold it around, or 
Well, the shape of the mold, that's a very good question. I have not figured out, uh, I have not uh, solved that riddle yet, so I'm still working on it. I use some 40,000 aluminum. I think I'm going to try maybe 32,000 and see if I can make that. In this case, what I did is I drilled a hole in it because I was going to make the bell and then put a wooden handle on it. Sure. And so I took an aluminum bell that was in existence and scaled it down, but uh, like I say, it. I think it uh, it drops down so quickly and for so far it's hard to form all the metal bring it back in sure. without wrinkling can you use copper or brass can we use other metals yeah. absolutely copper brass uh, s silver pewter pewter is really soft uh, you know any kind of metal that you want to want to try, yeah. Is the annealing process the same? No, each different each kind of metal will have a different. Uh, uh, I think the copper. I think it's already soft enough that you don't have to anneal it. But I know copper does turn colors when you eat it. But I'm, I'm not sure on, on copper. That's it. I haven't tried copper and so. Good question. Okay, we feathered and, uh, and also what I do is uh, I like to make the chuck, the base, a little bit concave, just like on a, uh, a wooden bowl. You make a little concave so that it sits on three points and it doesn't rock. Also, I make the follower a little convex to mate with the, the chuck. I also think that this also tends to hold the disc centered. So now we're going to move on to uh, the tool post. You do need a special tool post. And this is a piece of uh, cold rolled uh, round bar to match the diameter in the banjo. And it's a cold rolled steel uh, square on top with holes drilled into it. And then I have half inch pins that I got from the hardware store, a rod, just cut them off. And you can drop these pins in different locations, and you can. We'll see how this. Uh, we use our tool, and use this as a fulcrum to form our metal. So you, I got these with metal by the foot. Also, tell them how long you want it, what size, how long, and they'll cut it to size. I drill the holes myself. I got the pins that drop in. They're blind holes, so they don't drop through. I've seen some uh, tool posts where they drill all the way through and then they turn a smaller diameter on the pin so it doesn't drop all, all the way through. But I don't have a metal lathe, so this was the easiest for me and the simplest. And then you weld it. Uh, you can get a professional welder. You can probably get the guy down at the muffler shop to weld it. Or if you got a buddy with a welder, they can do it for you. Considerations? How deep are your holes? Uh, I don't know. I think this is an inch and a quarter bar, and they're probably really three quarters of an inch or so. Just deep enough that it doesn't go all the way through. <coughs> 
consideration. One thing is when you drop it in your in your banjo, you want to make sure that it clears the bed of the lathe. So don't make it too long that it sticks out and will hold, hit the side of the lathe and not clear the bed. Forming tools. There are some professional forming tools that are made out of steel. They're polished and um, highly polished and of different, usually shaped like a, the back of a spoon with easy flowing curves and there's one with the, it's kind of a, a bullet shaped and there's one where it's a, a roller with a semicircle cut into it that is used for uh, making a hem on on an aluminum bowl. And that's out of the scope of us tonight. There are also tools that are uh, a rounded bearing that they use. So they're, it cuts down on the friction. And I'll pass that down for the use that you all can see some of the tools. And here are the, the tools that we're going to use tonight. They are wooden, and I used what was at hand. This is a closet pole rod that I've made a smooth curve. This is a piece of 5 8 inch dowel, which I've also curved, and this is a, I don't know, 3 inch dowel. I use it a little bit. So you can use wooden tools to form aluminum. Yeah, you can use broomsticks, you know, you can turn a spindle, you can, you know, find wood out in the backyard and turn it down and make a lathe tool out of it. So when we true up the aluminum, what I'm going to do after I get it clamped in there is I'm going to uh, trim it. And what I have here is uh, it's a piece of quarter inch uh, lathe tool and I've taken and put it in a handle so I'm going to uh, use it. The disc gets a little bit out of round, it wobbles a little bit but the quarter inch width usually takes care of the, of the width so you can cut it. I started out with a file. I cut a Got a cutting edge on the end of the file, and that works well too. And you need lubrication. You need to lubricate the disc. You can use, what I use is good old paste wax. You can use, you can use grease. Everybody's got this. You can use grease or you can use beeswax or anything like that to, to make a lubricant. <coughs> Step back a little bit as a, a forming tool. One of the forming tools I've seen is a special pair of pliers where they will grab the edge of the disc and twist it around 90 degrees to start the hem and then they can twist the, the hem on around. These are a pair of angled pliers I bought at uh, Harbor Freight. I ground down all these, uh, polished them, made some smooth edges and it doesn't work so. <laughs> So I'm not doing hymns tonight. Rick? Yes. I'm going to regress a little bit. We've got a question from the long lines. Uh, how is the disc mounted 
for the burn. To? To burn off the marker. Okay. <laughs> well, one way is you can uh, leave a little tab on the disc and drill a hole in it and hang it from a wire. That's one way to do it. The other way that I do is I take two nails with heads on them, put them in a piece of wood, and then the disc cradles in that, and then a third nail at the top where the disc leans back on it. So I have two points at the bottom, leaning on one point at the top, and I put that in my vise to hold it, and then I heat it. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, metal cutting tools. So now, you guys probably wonder, what am I going to do now? Well, we're going to go ahead and try, try forming. Okay. <clears throat> going to put on my smock because if you put wax on there as some of you on the front row might find out it does throw a little bit of wax disc if you want to see what we're going to start out with. Has this already been annealed? Yes, it's annealed and ready to go. It's uh, been annealed, deburred, and seven inches, 40 thousandths aluminum. Right now I'm going to leave the, the regular tool rest in because I'm going to true it up with that cutter. All over the block. Decorative side is going to be the inside so I'm going to put it up against the chuck. Bring up the tail stock lightly because what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and center this visually and then I'm going to bring the tool rest up and try and find the high and the low spots. Sounds like round one. That's pretty good. <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> Which is another... That's a very good good point. If it looks dangerous and you don't think it's safe, don't do it. Very good point. What, when you fold the uh, cutting tool up to the camera so we can see what it is? Or? Let's see. Turn around. Turn around the other end. Switch into it. Oh, we're down here? Okay. What it is, it's a quarter inch square. Uh, it's a, a lathe tool that I got from Zorro. And is it the 
sharpened to a point or? It, uh, it just has a, an edge that's cut like this, about, I don't know, 10, 15 degrees. Rick? Yes. Uh, aim it at that tall camera. Right here, right here in front. There you go. Higher. Can everybody see that? Okay. This is a 6.35 uh, millimeter quarter inch um, blade tool. I tried a tool, uh, I, I got a piece of oil, oil hardened drill rod and I wasn't very happy with that so this works a lot better like I said the file works great so I may use it Let's see this can get a little noisy can you all hear me yeah. okay good uh, So I'm just going to go in, take light cuts until it kind of sounds like it's round. I'll shut it off and check it to make sure every now and then. Make sure the tail stock is, it wasn't all the way in. Okay, here we go. <coughs> this light test. Still have a ways to go yet. Still got that wobble in it, but that's okay. The aluminum will build up on the edge of the tool, so just knock it off. Or I have a I have an India stone that I can just knock it off with. good. I'm going to take a file and deburr it now. fingernail, run across, there's a burr right there. Okay. 
get that so that it's uh, it's round right now. It most likely will go out around as we form it, and we'll trim it again at the end. So we want to put some lubricant, put our paste wax on there. Before we do that, I'm going to change the tool rest. chips off the bed. We're going to coat on down to the center and out to the edge because we're going to be going up and down. I'm going to put a little bit on the edge of the opposite side. Now in lathe work and wood, what we want to do is be on the center line. But when we're doing the forming, we want to form below the center line. We're going to use this tool rest as a fulcrum for our tool. We're going to be here, we're going to be below, and we're going to go like this to form. Some force here and some force down. Some of that force will vector down into the lathe bed so that not all of it is going back towards the tailstock, like if you did it like this. Uh, okay. Uh, what kind of speed do you run? That's a good question. I don't have a tack on my lathe, so I'll turn it up and tell you what we're going to turn it. <laughs> That's not quite fast enough. Probably about a thousand. There goes nothing. Gonna start. I see a problem already. I got the follower block on backwards. I can change it without moving the disc. That'll work better. Okay. <coughs> We're going to get light pressure. what I had the second one for. It wants to wrinkle, so I capture between the two tools to, to straighten it out. What you want to do is keep the disc perpendicular to the axis of the lathe. And start here at the base, try and get it to, to start flowing. We go up and then we go down.
not always that noisy. You have your big stick on the face of it, and you have the small stick behind it. Is that yeah. Okay. Are you actually stretching that metal, or are you trying to compress it? Small? Well, I'm trying to stretch it, but what it's doing is it's it's starting to get um, some wrinkles in it. And as you can see, it doesn't always turn out perfect. <laughs> so I'm going to try and get these wrinkles out and see if we can get that done. sounds a little better. Pardon me? Is it because you're down against your form? I think that's part of it and uh, so it's it's moved some of the wrinkles on. I'm gonna put a little bit more lube on it. And move these pins around as you need to. Okay, we've got it up against the chuck. Now all we're going to do is trim it, make it round again. Turn the speed down a little bit. Probably about 800. Light cuts, if you're trying to take too big a cut, it will dig in, picking up some chatter.
I picked up the RPM a little bit to get a better cut. Deburr. chatter when I was using that cutting tool, so the file will take that out. I'm just going to take a little steel wool I touched that with the, my cutting tool. the outside of it. And what I use is a product called Semi-Chrome. It's made in Germany for uh, aluminum, chrome, brass. Hold it right over the tail center. Right. No, it's the yeah. Semi-Chrome. And as you can see by the gloves, it gets a little messy. It's just a pink liquid, a little paste. We can take it out now. Try and get that wax off. Sometimes putting a little more wax on it gets that hardened wax off of there. How would you roll that edge if you wanted, wanted a rolled edge on that? Well, you could take the pliers and, and get it started, and then you could either use two of your, your wooden pull, uh, sticks to fold it on over or one of those rollers with the, the hemming rollers. Do that at the, at, as a last resort, at, 
after you've got it molded to your form or before or when, when would be the best time to make your roll? Uh, probably before you get it up to the to the bottom of the chuck so okay. you can get in there and get it turned. And then once you get your hem formed and then you can uh, form it on down into the chuck. Okay. And you have to deburr both sides. up a little bit. <laughs> and there you have an aluminum bowl.